Good morning. Welcome. As we continue with our morning devotion, it is another new day. This is the day that God has made that we go, we come before him with praises and also worship him. It is you that God has ordained today that we give him a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. It is you that God has favored today that you be alive so that you may fulfill your purpose that he has set for you. It is you that God has also ordained that he can continue to teach you and, and empower you so that you continue working for him and achieve what God has created us for. It is indeed a new day that God has allowed us to continue with our theme of Christian growth. Remember, we are still growing. As the day goes, we grow older. The same way as Christians, we are called to grow a day at a time, a step at a time. It is always good to remember that in Christian growth is not about age, but how close we are with God. We have people who are too young, but have grown extremely because they have spent more time with God and they have transformed in many ways than those who have been in Christianity for a very long time. It all depends on how much time we spend with God, how much we spend in reading the word of God, how much we pray consistently, then we grow spiritually. If you want to grow, then focus on this. Read the word of God, meditate about it, study it, listen to it. Let him talk to you. Let God talk to you through his word. Have a prayer life, a prayer life that is cultivated. Yesterday we were looking at how we can cultivate our prayer life how we can grow to be prayer warriors. God just wants us to have a fellowship with him and an intimate relationship with him. And that can only be achieved by communicating with him, talking with him. And that talking is what we say is prayer. Today we continue with this theme of Christian growth. And we saw the other pillar of growth is fellowship with one another. Now, we as believers have been called so that we can come together and fellowship together. Remember, no man is an island. It is indeed true that salvation is personal. It is indeed true that he called you as you are alone. But when he called you, he empowered us that we may go out and make disciples. He empowered us that when we go out, we'll find other believers. And through those believers, we will continue to worship him, to thank him, to pray to him corporately as we also continue with our private lives. It is therefore God's intention that believers should have fellowships. Look at how the disciples were after the ascension of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Acts that they would meet together to pray together, to worship, to fellowship. And that strengthened them, that regardless of how the persecutions were, they were able to stand strong, to stand strong and also to evangelize, knowing that I am not alone. We are many. With, with others, we are stronger. And that is what God is calling us today, that let us focus in fellowship. If we need to grow our spiritual life, then we must have fellowship with one another. This is also an intentional one. We must have fellowship with one another. Brethren, if you are a believer, but you don't want to fellowship with others, you don't want to share and serve others, and also to pray with others, this means you are not an obedient Christian. Because an obedient Christian listens to the word of God and hears that God wants them to have fellowship with others. But if you don't obey that word, then it means you are, not a you are a disobedient Christian. It is God's will, brethren, that we fellowship with one another. It is also good to acknowledge that it is not easy to fellowship with others. You may be there, and this is the word for you, that you are asking yourself, why should I fellowship with those people yet they hate me? 
Why should I go to that fellowship? Yes, they see me as a stranger. Maybe you are in conflict with some of them. Maybe the fellowship is going to that home where is your enemy. Maybe the place where they meet, you don't like the person who lives there. Why should I go to fellowship? You are asking, Pastor, why should I go and get hurt in that fellowship? We it is, we are not ignorant, that indeed it is not easy to fellowship with one another. It is not easy to come together with one accord to pray together to God. The same with Christians. We have seen divisions in churches. We have seen divisions in fellowships. It is not easy. But you see, that is what God wants us to grow from. That God knows in our weaknesses, we have these challenges. But when we grow spiritually, they are no longer challenges. We are able to overcome them. Remember the great commandment that love your neighbor as you love yourself. This does not mean that they will be good to us, that they will be happy with us, that they will obey or respect us. No, but this is what God wants us to grow. Remember, Christian growth is growing towards a Christ-like life. That even when you are on the cross, even when they are crucifying you, you can say, Father, forgive them. That is the power of fellowship. That you can see them seated, knowing that they hate you, but you still love them. That that love is so much that you don't care what people say about you or see or care what they see about you. And that is what God wants us to do. That let us grow in fellowship. And it is only in fellowships that we can able to overcome such challenges as hatred. That God, I want that I grow to love and love sincerely. Regardless of how people are, regardless of who we fellowship with, regardless of their tribe, regardless of their spiritual level, I want a life that I can fellowship with them and feel that indeed I am part of the body of Christ. Remember, fellowships make us stronger. They make us overcome those trials. That things will come. But remember, those are some of the things that help us and teach us to endure one another. It is a calling that we have been called to take burdens for others and not judge them, but love them as they are. The same way we love the non-believers, it is the same way we are supposed to love our fellow Christians. We should not get weary of being with one another of fellowshipping with one another. Let us encourage one another, and only it can only happen in fellowship with one another. When you go to that fellowship and testify of God's doing, you are encouraging that other person. And you may turn his heart, wherever he is, whether he loves you or not, and see God in you, and help him too to overcome that challenge because you have been able to overcome. When we love, remember, we can only overcome hatred with love. And those people will see Christ in us and they will turn to him and also be able to forgive one another. When we fellowship together with all these challenges we are talking about, we develop the attributes of Jesus Christ that you can go and fellowship with someone who know that he did this, he's this kind of a sinner. But you remember, I'm not supposed to judge. I should pray for them. I should tell them that do not sin again. We have that attribute of Jesus Christ that we can go sit down and feed with our enemies. We can go out and feed with the non-believers. That you can sit with your betrayer and still love them. That is what Christian growth is all about. We want to be like Christ, not just in prayers, but also in fellowship, that we can overcome all these challenges 
and be like Christ. We are not there yet. It is a process. It is a journey. A time at a time. And that can only happen if we make an intentional decision that I will be fellowshipping with my believers, regardless of where the fellowship is, regardless of who is in that fellowship. And that way, God will help us to overcome those challenges that we face as believers in our fellowships. We also grow to be patient with one another. Brethren, it is only after we have fellowshiped with others that you can see their challenges and also see your challenge. And you'll be patient with others because other people are also patient with you. You realize that they are, only, they are not only the only people who do wrong, you'll find yourself also failing them and you want them to be patient with you. And when we have that fellowship, you realize that we all have challenges, only that they are different. We therefore have patience with them. We have patience with them and also we grow love. That we can love regardless of their situation, regardless of their level, regardless of their status. Fellowship does a lot in our spiritual growth. Fellowship does a lot in Christian growth. When you are alone, you may never know whether you are growing or not. By just doing your morning devotions alone will not help you grow. But when you do with others, then you find new challenges that you need to overcome. And by overcoming those challenges, you realize that you are growing from one step to another. Together, we grow. Together, we are able to overcome challenges. You will find there are challenges that will come to you on your way. And you'll need others to pray together with you. You may also find answers within them. That when you share your problem, then one person comes with an answer, with a solution. And you thank God for that fellowship. Let us see the good part of fellowship. Let us also see that the challenges we face in our fellowship groups, they are challenges planned by God to teach us, to strengthen us, so that we can grow endurance, perseverance, and most importantly, forgiveness. It is in those fellowships that you learn how to forgive, that you can sit with someone who wronged you and see that indeed I need to forgive them and they need to forgive you and walk together as Christians. All these things, can only be learned when we fellowship with one another. You cannot learn them alone. You cannot grow them alone. No man is an island. And you cannot grow spiritually alone. You need others to encourage you. You need others to challenge you. God has purposed that we as Christians should come together, fellowship together with our differences, so that we can be like Christ, that we can be friends to all, regardless of their tribe. Friends to all, regardless of whether they love us or not, whether they follow us or not. Let us be willing to be like Christ, that we can fellowship with sinners, we can fellowship with our enemies, we can fellowship with our fellow Christians, with a love that only comes from God, that unconditional love. You can share the word of God, you can testify of his goodness before men and have fellowship with them. And that way we will grow spiritually. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.